was the year 1926 in a nondescript village named Puttaparthi in Andhra Pradesh on Monday the 23rd of November was born a son who would later lead and demonstrate how a life of selfless love and service can unite the world Satya Narayana Raju known to the world and his followers as Sri Satya Sai Baba had humble origins he was a school dropout but he gave Puttaparthi and the world a university where education was absolutely free his hamlet did not even have a dispensary but he gifted millions access to free health care villagers would trek miles for a can of potable water but he made sure clean water was brought right into their homes the foundation to these acts of altruism was laid by his mother Ishwaramma who expressed her desire to offer the village basic necessities of life Baba's message of love was simple it spelled the essence of all religions and spirituality in easy simplified and palatable doses there is only one religion the religion of love he would say and only one caste the caste of humanity love and service were the two tools of transformation he employed to bring about individual and collective transformation he set up the shri satya sai seva organization in the 1960s in india and the international satya sai organization globally later to reach out to people while the organization inspired adults to follow his teachings baba started the bal vikas program in india and the sai spiritual education overseas to appeal to little children and young adults through plays and short stories compiled from his discourses children around the world are taught the unifying power of the basic human values of love truth peace righteousness and non-violence medical camps and villages distribution of food and clothes to the needy disaster relief work are some of the regular service activities undertaken by his volunteers if baba's message was to love all his mission was to serve all when he was barely 21 he wrote to his brother describing the nature of his mission i have a task to foster all mankind and ensure for all of them lives full of bliss i have a vow to lead all who stray away from the straight path again into goodness and save them i am attached to a work that i love to remove the sufferings of the poor and grant them what they lack the first stamp of his love came in the form of a college for women in july 1968 at anantapur not too far from puttaparthi ever the champion for women empowerment baba saw women as upholders of dharma he stressed on equipping them with spiritual education integrated with ethical and physical sciences the same model of holistic education was replicated at whitefield bangalore where a college for men came up in 1969 it took another 10 years for baba to establish the second men's campus in his hometown puttaparthi these institutes of education were appended to the shri satya sai institute of higher learning a deemed university established in 1981 baba stressed that education should be for life and not for a mere living the end of education is character and the end of knowledge is love the university stated as its mission the shaping of self-reliant enterprising young men and women of action and self-sacrifice for the purpose of serving humanity temples of healing followed the temples of learning moved by the plight of people who couldn't afford quality health care baba set about to provide free health services to the millions the gates of the hospitals are open to every patient requiring treatment striking down barriers of religion caste creed and nationality 
The first general hospital was set up in Puttaparthi in 1956. This was followed by another general hospital in Bangalore in 1976. Both these hospitals put together see at least 700 patients a day. Baba however wanted bigger hospitals with better facilities. In 1991 on the occasion of his 65th birthday a 300 bed super speciality hospital became operational in Puttaparthi. In 11 years its twin came up in Bangalore to deliver more complex surgeries. What makes these hospitals matchless in character is not just the fact that they do not have a cash counter but that they are run by teams of dedicated doctors and volunteers who are committed to patient well-being in the spirit of brotherhood of man and fatherhood of god water sustains life and unfortunately in india there are many who spend a whole day in search of this source to sustain themselves what was required to fix this was only an intention to help at baba's behest multiple water projects have been executed the shri satyasai water supply project was mentioned in the ninth five year plan of india as a project worthy of emulation the fourth world water forum held in mexico in march 2006 adjudged the project as one of the best 10 local action projects in the world al baba felt that access to good education reliable health care and clean water were essential to living and thus should be provided free of cost these were mere ways to express and demonstrate his love for humanity it was the third decade of freedom and india was grappling with the ills of deprivation on all economic and social fronts but then came a powerful yet silent revolution kindled in a remote village in karnataka one man inspired by the love for his motherland set out to resurrect the ancient gurukul system of education with the belief that true education alone can lead to betterment of a community and nation at large anna to some mentor to others late shri madyal narayan bhat was the founding father and patron of the alike and muddinahalli schools set up under the aegis of the loka seva vrinda society the first school was set up in alike in 1962 it was the same year that he happened to meet another visionary shri satyasai baba in whom he saw a leader an ideal and a guru agina kaladalli illi yavude reetiya ondu nagarika moola saulabhyagalu irlilla raste samparka irlilla vidyut irlilla iga aneka reetiya vidyabhyasa muntada aneka vishayagalige illi yavude reetiya saukaryagalu irlilla adrinda prerepitara anta pujya madiyal nan bitru ee samasyege loka seva avrinda andre idu bare namma ondu grama athava ondu karnataka athava ondu desha alla idi manava janangakke seva sallisuvanta ondu uddeshavanu ittukondru yakandre ondu samasthe beledu eshtu vishalavagi habbodu ಆದ್ದರಿಂದ ನಾನಲ್ಲಿರು ನನ್ನಿಂದ ಮುಂದಿನವರಾದರೂ ಮಾಡಬಹುದು ಎಂಬ ದೃಷ್ಟಿಯಿಂದ ಅವರು ಲೋಕಸೇವಾ ಅಂತ ಬಹಳ ಒಂದು ವಿಶಾಲವಾದ ಅರ್ಥವುಳ್ಳೆ ಹೆಸರನ್ನಿಟ್ರು ಅ ಡೆಕೆಡ್ ಲೇಟರ್ ಚಿಕ್ಕಬಳ್ಳಾಪುರ ತಾಲೂಕು ದ ಟೌನ್ ಥ್ರೂ ವಿಚ್ ಬಾಬಾ ಪಾಸ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ವೆನ್ ಎವರ್ ಹಿ ಟ್ರಾವೆಲ್ಡ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಪುಟ್ಟಪರ್ತಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಲೋರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಚೋಸನ್ ಆಸ್ ದ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ ಆಮೇಲೆ ನಾವು ಈ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ ಒಳ್ಳೆದ ಚಿಕ್ಕಬಳ್ಳಾಪುರದ ಮಕ್ಕಳು ಇಲ್ಲಿಗೆ ಬಂದರು ಚಿಕ್ಕಬಳ್ಳಾಪುರದ ಹೆತ್ತವರು ಏನು ಹೇಳಿದರು ಅಂದರೆ ನೀವು ನಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ಶಾಲೆ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ಚಿಕ್ಕಬಳ್ಳಾಪುರದಲ್ಲಿ ಆಗ ನಮಗೆ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಧೈರ್ಯ ಬರಲಿಲ್ಲ ನಾವು ವಿಶೇಷ ಮುಂದುವರಿಲಿಲ್ಲ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಹತ್ರ ಹೋಗಿ ಕೇಳುವ ಅಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಹತ್ರ ಕೇಳಿದ್ರು ಶಾಲೆ ಮಾಡು ಸಾಲ ಹೋಗ್ತದೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಇನ್ ಏಪ್ರಿಲ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ತ್ರೀ ಒನ್ ಬಾಬಾ ವಿಸಿಟೆಡ್ ಮಣಿಪಾಲ್ ಇನ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಅನ್ನ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಟು ನೇಮ್ ದ ಕ್ಯಾಂಪಸ್ ಅಟ್ ಮುದ್ದನಹಳ್ಳಿ ದ ನೇಮ್ ಸತ್ಯಸಾಯಿ ಗ್ರಾಮ ವಾಸ್ ದೆನ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ವಿಸಿಟ್ ಟು ಮುದ್ದನಹಳ್ಳಿ ಬಾಬಾ ಹೆಡ್ ರಿಮಾರ್ಕ್ this is veritably a tapobhumi and assured the staff at muddanahalli that he had a master plan in mind for this sacred place however due to the untimely demise of anna in an accident in 1977 the volunteers lost not just a mentor 
but also the guiding force in their lives. It was then that Baba took over these institutions and instilled courage into their hearts. Baba said to them, Narayan Bhatt was no doubt a great and good person. But one flower, however big and beautiful, does not make a garland. All of you stood behind him as one man. Keep up that unity. You will see that the institution will prosper more and more. The two schools were then formally taken over by Papa under the newly formed Sri Satya Sai Lokaseva Trust at Muddinahalli in August 1978. He set high standards for the schools, even as character development continued to remain the end goal. Papa wanted his students to transform themselves first and then the society. <laughs> ಭಗವಂತನ ಮೇಲೆ ವಿಶ್ವಾಸವನ್ನು ಬೆಳೆಸಿಕೊಳ್ಬೇಕು ತಂದೆ ತಾಯಿಯ ಮೇಲೆ ಪೂರ್ತಿ ವಿಶ್ವಾಸ ಇಟ್ಟುಕೊಳ್ಬೇಕು ಗುರುಗಳ ಮೇಲೆ ವಿಶ್ವಾಸ ಇಟ್ಟುಕೊಳ್ಬೇಕು ಒಳ್ಳೆಯ ಪ್ರಾಮಾಣಿಕರಾಗಿರುವ ಹಾಗೆ ಮಾಡಿಕೊಳ್ಬೇಕು ಹಾಗಿದ್ದರೆ ಮಾತ್ರ ಅವರಿಗೆ ಒಳ್ಳೆಯ ಕೀರ್ತಿ ಬರ್ತದೆ ಬರೇ ವಿದ್ಯೆ ಕಲಿತ ಕೂಡಲೇ ಎಲ್ಲಿಯಾದ ಹೋಗಿ ಏನೋ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡಿಕೊಂಡಿರ್ಬೋದು ಆದರೆ ಸ ನನಗೆ ಅದು ತೃಪ್ತಿ ಅಲ್ಲ ನನಗೆ ಮಕ್ಕಳಿಗೆ ತೃಪ್ತಿ ಆಗಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಒಳ್ಳೆಯ ನಡತೆಯನ್ನು ಅವರು ಬೆಳೆಸಿಕೊಂಡು ಜೀವನದಲ್ಲಿ ಅವ್ರ ತಂದೆ ತಾಯಿಗೆ ತುಂಬ ಸಂತೋಷ ಆಗಬೇಕು ಗುರುಗಳಿಗೂ ಸಂತೋಷ ಆಗಬೇಕು ಅವ್ರು ಯಾರನ್ನೆಲ್ಲ ಕಾಣ್ತಾರೋ ಅವ್ರನ್ನೆಲ್ಲವನ್ನ ಪ್ರೀತಿಯಿಂದ ಕಾಣುವಂಥ ರೀತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಅವರು ಬೆಳೆಸ್ಕೊಂಡು ಬರಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಮ್ಮನ್ನೆಲ್ಲ ಕಡೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದರು ಟುಡೇ ಸತ್ಯ ಸಾಯಿ ಗ್ರಾಮ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಮೋರ್ ದನ್ ಒನ್ ಥೌಸಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಏಟ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಆಫ್ ದೆಮ್ ರಿಸೈಡಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಹಾಸ್ಟೆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಷನ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಕ್ಯಾಂಪಸಸ್ ಅ ಬ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೆಡಿಕೇಟೆಡ್ ಎಲ್ಡರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ who have taken a vow of lifelong celibacy these tyaga jeevis as baba calls them stay with the students on the campus and look after their progress and welfare studying in swami's institution was a dream come true for me the elders and teachers here are so loving to us that i don't remember even a single day when i may have thought of my parents swami our mother is taking care of everything he is giving us everything from a toothbrush to even education totally free of cost here we don't get only a secular education but we also get spiritual education that's what is called education and being under the divine umbrella is a great experience and what else we want when the lord of the universe himself is guiding us baba had once declared that the number of tyaga jeevis would swell from a mere 6 at that time to not just 60 or 6000 but 60000 the alumni from alike and muddanahalli to further the cause of nation building started the shri satya sai saraswati education trust a unique social venture in october 2011 under its auspices the first campus shri satya sai vidya niketana was established at gulbarga district in june 2012 The other educational projects that were added in the next couple of years are Shri Satya Sai Sharada Niketanam Boys Mandya District Shri Satya Sai Divya Niketanam Boys Chikmangalur District Shri Satya Sai Shri Niketanam Girls Chikmangalur District and Shri Satya Sai Anand Niketanam Boys Bagalkot District Two new institutions the Shri Satya Sai Prem Niketanam Boys Bijapur District and Shri Satya Sai Prashanti Niketanam a pre-university college for girls in the Chikpalapur district will open for admissions in the current academic year over 4400 students including 900 girls benefit from this integral education system absolutely free of cost 4 months after Swami left the body on 27th of August 2011 Swami spoke to me in, in Anandam in the subtle form. That was the first time uh, he told me, it is my sankalpa that a new educational campus should come up in uh, near Gulbarga. It was a big surprise for me because I never went to Gulbarga. I had heard, just heard the name. He said, I have already identified the land. It is 50 acres in extent, sloping towards east, sloping towards north. There is a very old road on the eastern side and there is a road on the southern side. 
you just go there on uh, 6th of september and uh, stay there for a few days and look around and as per swami's uh, command i went there after i reached gulbarga swami again uh, told me uh, we had a meeting on the 7th evening september about 300 400 devotees had gathered swami asked me to make three announcements one is the bhumi puja for the new campus would be done before that birthday in 2011 the second he asked me to announce a high school would be started in june 2012 and a majestic completed building would be inaugurated before the next birthday in 2012 and all, i i myself never believed that it would happen but all the three things happened now it is a part of history and it was in 2011 august i remember i heard um, that Warden Sir Murthy Anna, I've never met him you know, before, I actually only met him vaguely once, was going to build some schools in India for the poor. And when I heard about this, I felt inside that this was a good, wonderful news to hear because Swami's mission cannot stop when he's in the physical. Okay, what we see in Puttapeti was just one phase of the mission. And Swami's mission is always about expansive love. The task at hand today is to set up modern day Gurukulas all over Karnataka first, one in each of the 30 districts of the state, 20 boys schools and 10 schools for the girls and later extended to other parts of rural India. To facilitate this vision, the Centre for Human Excellence was set up in Muddanahalli in 2014. This unique institution will help churn out individuals committed to the cause of education, individuals who will go on to take up teaching positions in the many institutions being set up by the Trust. While the sheer magnitude of these projects can leave one baffled, Baba had planned it all many years ago, as early as the late 70s. I think it was back in uh, uh, 70s, uh, late 70s or maybe even early 80s that uh, <coughs> Swami, my father and I were having an interview with Swami in uh, Parthi and there were other devotees also. And then for some reason, then Swami got into a reflective mood. Sometimes he does that in an interview. And then he said, you know, you people are enjoying my uh, darshan. And there are so, you can see outside there are thousands and thousands over there who are waiting and come for my darshan. And, uh, but this is a phase. And this phase is going to end. And at that time, gradually I'm going to be starting to withdraw away from these crowds. And I'm going to go and retire on a hilltop. And what is going to happen there is, yes, <clears throat> I'm not going to be totally secluded, but I will be surrounded by a handful of my chosen devotees. And there will be much smaller groups. It will be a different, but I will be doing that towards the end. Then when uh, we thought about it, you know, and we said it could be possibly uh, Muddin Ali because Swami had taken over Muddin Ali by that time. Swami, he visited this place, probably that was in uh, 1981, I think. Uh, I prayed to Bhagwan, Swami, every time you come in the morning and go back in the evening, uh, you should come here and stay here for a few days. He said, I will come on a Purnima day, full moon day, and I will stay here. That's what he said. But never came to pass uh, till he was in the physical frame and in fact after Baba gave up his physical body in April 2011 he came to me in the subtle form for the first time on uh, 10th of July uh, 2011 four months almost three four months after he left the physical body he told me on 10th of July that I will come here on the Guru Purnima day and I will stay here itself move all my things from Premdeep, the mandir, uh, where Swami used to come and stay when he visited this place physically, to the hilltop uh, bungalow. He also named it Sri Satyasai Anandam at that point of time. Swami used to tell with me, before this uh, university campus was established, you know, he was very keen to come and stay here. Sri Satyasai Baba's biggest gift to humanity was his legacy of love. His life, a testimony to his message 
of love all and serve all has inspired and drawn countless individuals to the path of selfless service. Baba's mission to foster mankind, lead people onto a path of goodness and to remove sufferings of the poor is now being taken forward by those who have dedicated their lives to live his message. What is Swami's message? Seva, you know, without any expectations. We can do always something for our near and dear ones. But to do something for those people whom you don't know, who are needy, and do it without expectations. This is what Swami's message is, what I could little bit understand. Baba, in a subtle form now, continues to guide and motivate devotees to take his mission of love and service forward. Educare, healthcare and aquacare remain the focus areas. Sri Satyasai Sanjeevani Hospital, Naya Raipur, Chhattisgarh, that primarily specializes in pediatric healthcare was completed from concept to completion in a record time of less than eight months. It commenced its operations in November 2012 and has since touched many lives. And it is singularly to the credit of Swami that in his uh, endeavor in Raipur, he's put a cardiac hospital in place. And mind you, this is a cardiac institute that he put in place which covers the entire spectrum of healthcare. Healthcare, as we understand, is normally understood as hospitals, whereas healthcare primarily is prevention, education, promotion, curation, and recuperation. So, recuperation and curation, which primarily happen in hospitals, are one one small part of healthcare. And Swami's great message in healthcare was, it is about not getting you into hospitals. So, this address to children wherein we are serving the central Indian segment to begin with and after two years I am both saddened and proud to tell you that the hospital reaches out to patients or children specifically from every state of India from neighboring countries like Bangladesh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Afghanistan and countries in, in Africa like Nigeria. Swami all his life has tirelessly worked in alleviating suffering. So we really have to now rise up. This is now a moment of action and we have to relentlessly, ceaselessly keep working. Work smartly, work most diligently. I tell myself a formula which is first have a heart that feels, then have a mind that envisions, then crave for that capacity that can endeavor and finally pray to God for a will that you achieve. So the Raipur hospital is shaped like a heart and that epitomizes the love that it's built on. Uh, when I went there, I mean one of the things that you always ask people is how did you come to Swami? I mean that's between devotees, we always ask that. How did you come to Swami? So I'm talking to the doctors in the hospital and I found out they had never seen Swami in the physical form. Said, well, how did you come to Swami? They came to Swami through the hospital so they could offer their love and service to God in the form of these children that need operations. Now, you stop and think about that for a second. These little babies, these children, are in there for a heart operation that requires their chest to be opened up, yeah? Doesn't that scare you? It would scare me. So you think, when these children see the doctor coming, what's the reaction going to be? Fear? Not here. These children saw the doctors. I got to do rounds, so I walked through the wards. They lit up. They're smiling. They're asking the doctors to pick me up, to hold me. And this doctor, who's incredibly busy, is taking time with each child, knows them by name. And how are you doing? Oh, how's your night? And holding them and loving them and, you know, tussling their hair. Gave one little boy a kiss on the forehead. You never see this in a hospital. Never. There was this little boy 
maybe eight years old. And he kept asking the doctors every day, when can I have my operation? When can I have my operation? When can I have my operation? And the doctors finally asked him, why are you so in so much of a hurry? And <laughs> this is what the little boy said. Now picture this. He said, I want to hurry up and get operated on so I can go back to school, study well, become a doctor and come back and do this service. This is what's happening at that hospital, pure love. More such temples of healing are in the offing. Given the paucity of quality and affordable healthcare, similar hospitals are now being planned in the states of Delhi, Maharashtra, Gujarat and West Bengal. The many humanitarian projects that were executed under Baba's direct supervision continue to multiply in its scope and scale even today. In 2008, <coughs> some people from Adilabad, they came and asked Swami regarding water supply. Then Swami asked me, what, what is, how is Adilabad means? I said, it is very bad, Swami. It is a very poor district and all that we should give. Okay, you prepare some estimate, he said. Afterwards, somehow or other, 2008, uh, Swami also fell sick, somehow or other, the work did not uh, get through. Surprisingly, in 2000, after two, uh, 2012, Swami came to us and uh, he said, uh, you remember at the time we were thinking of uh, Adilabad scheme, now we have to take it up, that is what he said. So I was surprised because that particular 2008 discussion is known only to me and Swami. Nobody else knows about this thing. As far as Adilabad is concerned, we have almost, I got the government sanction also, we wanted to implement. Meanwhile, Swami himself uh, once told me, it may take some time for you, you better wait. Those are the, some directions he has given. So we waited. In the meanwhile, of course, Telangana state and Andhra state, these two are bifurcated now, two states have become. So perhaps Swami knows all these things uh, in advance, that is why He asked us to wait. And He said, now it will go through the government funds, don't worry, that Adilabha scheme is now sanctioned with the government funds. In the next visit, He also said, not only this, after this you will have to be ready to take up works <coughs> in other areas like First he said we may have to do something in Sirpur of Adilabad itself and then Youth Mall of Maharashtra state and then you may have to do even in Rajasthan also. That is what he told me at that time. So one by one let us try to do number of projects so you be prepared for all these things. That is what he said. While Vidya, Vaidya and Vari have been Baba's focus areas of development since long, he has now added another dimension, Vidyut, to his mission. Under his guidance, a group of devotees have set up a company, Lotus Energy Solutions, which will cater to the growing energy needs of present times. The Swami's direction to us uh, in this present this thing has to be set up a company which is very unique, Lotus Energy Solutions, which Swami wants it to be for in the energy sector, but restricted to, but you know, there was a caveat on not just a company to make money. Yes, it is a for-profit company. But to, be, uh, to address only for clean energy, clean env environment. So we are into uh, renewables, solar, plus we are into natural gas and, uh, na as a clean fuel. And the whole company has been set up with the idea that 50% of its profits would be given for charity. Which is, uh, today as you know in the corporate world it's only 2% that is mandated also by law, not out of your... But, Saying that we are giving 50% away and having that written into our uh, Articles of Association and having made it irrevocable, I think uh, like uh, amongst other uh, things of Swami, a first of its kind. And this is what I think should, I'm hoping will awaken more social entrepreneurs. There are plenty of them in our in the world today, social entrepreneurs. You can see big business is now going away towards more of entrepreneurship. And in the entrepreneurship, if social entrepreneurs can lead the way, that is the Sai way. If there is purity of intent, nothing can stop good work from moving ahead, Baba would say. 
Since the time he left his mortal coil in April 2011, nothing has really changed. For where else can we see or hear about initiatives like these, driven by like-minded individuals with one mantra on their lips? Service to mankind is service to God. One must have faith in Swami that he has not gone anywhere. He is with us, guiding us. We are happy to be here and support the mission of Swami. Where there is love and service, Swami will always be there. See, we are nobody to even think or comment about it. Because Swami says something, it will happen. Swami See, form or formless is just a human limitation, that's what I think. Even Swami, when He was in His body, He was travelling everywhere. At the same time, He was everywhere. So, it's just for the human eye, that is, He's lost the body. But His message of love, selfless service, there's Sai devotees all over the world, helping, helping the poor, helping in hospitals, helping, in, helping animals, helping in every possible way, that people can be helped, Swami sends his people to do that. I realized that the, the mission that he had was through me and through all of the people that came there, that he wasn't going to act like um, a big star that he was going to do it through us, that we were his spokespeople, we were going to be his examples through time. It is said that um, we constantly are saying we love Sati Sai Baba or we love God. And really, isn't it so we love him because he loved us first? His universal love is what attracts us. And once he's there, we're captured. And that's what, and, but even today, here it is, he's emphasizing love in action. Enlightening thing for, for me has been the realization that Swami in the physical form was just there to introduce people to a taste of the divine. And uh, in the transformation of the subtle form, Swami has explained to us that now is time for people to put love and service in action. Uh, his 85 years in the physical form was to actually bring people and inform people about God and the divine. And the subtle form is to actually transpose that into real action, service, and love. So when I heard about all the achievements of the students, I turned to my daughter and I said, what would be your preference? Would you rather see your child drive a BMW or would you rather spend your money to see all these children educated? And she looked at me and she said, Mum, of course I would want the children to be educated. And this is our social responsibility because we are the elders. It is our responsibility to help. But what happens? Why we are able to do that? It's because we are inspired by Swami's love. He transforms the heart so you see that that child is not separate to you. That child is your child. If you have that feeling, then you feel, yes, I will help in Swami's mission. You know, give me that opportunity. Let me build the hospitals with you, Swami. Let me educate the people. Because what better legacy would be that? Because this is love in action. So from my experience, what I'm seeing is the changes of the mission with his devotees that has become more intensified. There isn't the form to almost, to, for me, to be distracted by. I feel that the formless is come into our hearts and connected us all as a family. And the family now is about being selfless. Selfless love in action. I think this is one chance in our lifetime to see the love and divinity in action. Losing this opportunity is not what we all want. 
So there is still some time left. Go to his discourses, listen to his teachings, and see the basic truth how one can learn his teachings, learn spirituality, and attain salvation. Where there is a will, there is a way. But where there is love, there are innumerable ways. In the 85 years that Sri Satya Sai Baba lived, he was a living God to his followers, spiritual guru to others, and philanthropist to agnostics. His love for humanity is incomparable, and he always propagated that stupendous objectives can be achieved through love and compassion. But the reason he made way into millions of hearts, transcending the boundaries of race and religion, was because of the way he reached out to one and all. Sometimes by providing basic necessities, sometimes nudging people onto the righteous path, and sometimes by just being there all along for everyone when no one else was around. He's given us this opportunity to do service. I, in my small way, was attracted totally to Sai Baba from the very beginning because of the service projects that he did and was blessed to play a small role in the Puttaparthi Hospital, which was a great honor, but played a very small role. Giving cash is easy when you've got plenty of it. Just ask yourself, uh, why does God make the strong ones? It's to take care of the weaker ones. Uh, do not follow me as I may not lead, and do not lead as I may not follow. Just walk with me and be my friend. Sai Baba is not only your best friend, he is your only friend. There is only one religion, the religion of love. There is only one language, the language of the heart. There is only one caste, the caste of humanity. There is only one God. He is omnipresent. It is toward achieving this goal that Baba set about as a youth of 21 years. The vision of one world, united by the power of love where each lives for the other and everyone lives for God. This is on course to becoming a reality.